Hi, I'm Dave with Louet. We're at the Louet factory and we're doing a uh, assembly video on the David loom. So this is the finished version, uh, but I'm going to go through step by step how we got there. So uh, stay tuned and uh, hope you enjoy. Okay, so now the first step we're going to take is putting these uh, dowels into the holes. And it's the outside two holes on uh, both sides of all four of these cross pieces. These are the lower cross pieces. These are the upper cross pieces for the uh, frame of the loom. So getting back here, and just seat one in. And then and you want to hit it until you... Hear that difference in sound. When the dowel gets to the end of the hole that's pre-drilled, it makes that different sound. And then you know you're in. So I'll go through and do this for the rest of them. And we'll see you at the next step. Okay, so now we're going to take the upper horizontal side supports uh, that we, you can recognize them easily by this groove and they're going to, this is how they're going to get situated on the loom so that the uh, cloth beam can fit into the groove and slide forward to lock it in place. So you want to work with the ones that have H in the front side. Now we're looking at this, this is the right side. We're going to put the pole that's holding the, uh, uh, locking the cloth beam attaching that to the right side piece. So I'm going to take the left one, put it off to the side here. And uh, I've got the bolts and washers and pole here. So what I want to do is take the uh, bolt, lag bolt, put the small washer on it. Then we're going to put the, uh, actually go like this, sorry. Put the pole through and then large washer and then we're going to place it in, in this hole you can see there's a little bit larger hole underneath the groove here and that's where we're going to place this and it's a just a give it a little turn with your fingers until you can't anymore and then you grab your 10 millimeter bolt and we're going to turn that and I'm going to turn it so that it's tight and then I'm going to back it off a little bit because it needs to be just loose enough to be able to turn. But if it's too loose, then you're going to have a lot of play in it and you're not going to like that. So I'll show you what I mean as we get here. Well, that's going to be getting close. Maybe. Yeah. All right. So that's It needs to move freely and that's not. Okay. So that's why we unscrew it slightly. Now it's moving freely. If you unscrew too much, you get a lot of this play. So we're going to tighten it back up a little bit. Reduce that play. Well, now that's too much. So you can see this very small. It was about, I don't know, an eighth of a turn, maybe even less, that made the difference from being you know, wiggly. Now it doesn't have that, that play and turning freely. And that's, that's really what you want. Okay, we'll go to the next step. Okay, so the next step is the lower uh, horizontal side supports where you've got these uh, hinge hooks that are uh, where the beater is going to hinge from. Uh, we have to install those. So there's a few things here that I want to point out. First of all, I'm working on a David 70 installation. And so it has a position for all the lambs. That, that's these holes here. On a David 90 or a 110, uh, you will not have these holes. Instead, you have a couple of dowels that uh, uh, fit in to the assembly a little later on uh, where the, where the um, lambs are inserted. So there is a little difference that you might see between your loom and what you're seeing in the video, and that's this point here. 
Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is, is with these hinge hooks, uh, they determine uh, the beater height, as I said. And in order to try to get this height as close as possible to accurate right from the beginning, uh, we're going to include a little uh, jig that you can use to make sure it's at the right height. But for now, uh, other things you can look at, uh, this nut has to be screwed on five centimeters from the end. It's four threads from the bottom here. And uh, so that's the first step is through, uh, screw this nut on. Then we place the small washer. And I've already done the assembly over here and that's snug. The position of this, uh, this would be in this orientation on the loom so that the hinge uh, is pointed outwards to the outside of the loom because these lamb connections have to be pointed on the inside. Okay, but right now we're got it upside down for the point of, uh, yeah, once that's installed, it's hard to put it the other way. So here we have uh, um, the barrel nut. We're going to put the barrel nut inside the hole here in the center, and we're going to put the, the hinge hook in and get it to connect. And I'm going to take this out and maybe show barrel nuts for a second because this is the first time in this video that we talked about barrel nuts. Barrel nuts uh, have the threaded portion for the, the nut on the side and you've got a slot here uh, so that you can hold it fast with the screwdriver. We're going to use the same kind of barrel nut. This is M8 but we're going to use M6s later on as well. So we use a lot of these barrel nut connections and that allows for uh, a very solid connection uh, in a piece of wood. All right, so that's how, how this works. So we put it inside. Sometimes these barrel nuts fit deeper inside and you can't touch it with your fingers. That's why there's a slot so you can hold it with a screwdriver to hold the position straight. The fact that it's straight up and down like that means that the hole to which I'm going to screw this in is oriented in the correct position. If this is, is turned slightly like this, then the hole is not in the right position and I will never be able to get my my uh, bolt into it. So there, I've got it turned again. Anyway, back to this point, screw this in and I'm going to screw it right down so that the nut here comes right in snug. And then I want this facing outward like this. And then I'm going to take my 13 millimeter wrench and tighten this nut so it's good and snug. And that way this won't move. Now, a little uh, hint, if your beater needs to go higher or lower, this is what you loosen. And if you want to uh, make your reed go higher, you're going to screw it in deeper. If you want to make your reed go lower, you're going to unscrew it. Okay, and then when you're finished adjusting, you tighten this back up and make it snug. Okay, when it's snug, it's not going to move. If you leave it loose, it's going to move around on you and change height on you. Okay, so that's uh, this step. We're going to go on to assembling all these horizontal side supports to the front and uh, back uprights. Okay, so now we're going to uh, start working with the front posts. You can recognize them, letters H and G. And first thing we're going to do is put the pins, steel rods, uh, that um, the cloth beam, uh, no, not the cloth beam, the breast beam will sit on. We're going to put those in here. And the easiest way is to put it here and then Insert it a little bit and you take your hammer and you hit it. You hear that difference in sound? That means it's fully in. And we'll do the other one as well. It is a snug fit, so that's uh, why you need a, a rubber mallet or hard, uh, hard plastic is what I have. A regular hammer will work too. A rubber mallet, you might tear it apart a bit, 
So we'll see what you can, what works for you. There we go. And we're ready for the next step. Okay, here we are with the uh, right back post. Uh, and that's marked DB. And we've got an F on top. So FDB. And we're going to take the upper uh, support, uh, horizontal support, and put the dowels in the appropriate holes, putting uh, D with D. Slide that in, give it a little push. Now I'm going to take uh, one of the 130 millimeter bolts and put it in the hole on the side. And generally, before you do that, don't, before you push this bolt all the way through, you need to put the, uh, a, a bar the barrel nut in the center hole here. Again, remember what I said earlier about barrel nuts, the uh, line needs to be facing that way. And then you start turning this in until it's completely screwed in. Take your 10 millimeter uh, wrench and tighten it up. And we do the same thing with the right lower support. And that's going to be B on B. And the hinge is going to face outward. So we push, push that in a little bit. If you can't get it, the, the um, uh, dowels to push in very far, not to worry because the uh, when you're tightening this bolt, that'll pull it all together. Sometimes those uh, tolerances can be pretty tight and, and you can't push them in very far. And that's not a problem like I have here. So now this is bring it over here so you can see that. You see the gap and we're just gonna close that gap by tightening the bolts. Hold on to your wrench. Okay, so that's the right side. Now we're gonna switch over and, and do the left side. Okay, here we are with the uh, assembly that we just completed. Now we're going to take the uh, front post. You can see the lettering G, G, H, H. So you just line that up and put in the bolts just like the other side. So I'm gonna put this on its side like that. And line that up, this one as well. And I'm just gonna push it in. Push those beer, um, dowels in. Put this on the side here, and put the barrel nut in. Same as before. A little bit of uh, positioning for that straight piece. Grab my wrench. If you have a socket set, that's always handy too. I find it easier than a uh, than a uh, wrench, but uh, you need a 16 millimeter. You need, you need metric because this is all metric uh, hardware. And if you don't have the metric, yes, your imperial can make do, but you might also uh, slip on the nuts. So I would recommend metric. If I'm assembling these for someone at home, I'm bringing my ratchet uh, set. There we go. That's the complete set. And now we're going to do the left side. And we'll come back for the next step. Okay, we're going to attach the uh, bottom foot rail uh, with all the felt pads. We're going to attach that to the right side. We've got uh, four of the 55 millimeter screws. I'm first just going to stick those screws in here like that. Uh, now with this piece here, you can see that there's a bit of an angle right 
here where my thumb is. All right, that is to allow for the uh, uh, angle that the treadles uh, strike this uh, fo uh, footrest on. So it has to be positioned so that the uh, angle is like this. So this, the side that is the longest, shall we say, this way, is what goes towards the front. Hope that makes sense. Now I'm going to put these in and grab my screwdriver. Now I've repositioned just a little bit and asked for a helping hand, thank you. Uh, we've got the screws still in place and I'm going to screw that left side in here. Okay, I've got the left side position here, roughly line it up. Uh, I'm going to put my screws in here in advance, just makes it a little, little easier. And then reach up. A little bit of a balancing act. Again, you can have somebody give you a hand. Now that that screw is stuck in there, you know, it's holding. So now I'm going to take my screwdriver and give it a little bit of a, now it's got a little more grip in there, I can put in the second one and screw the whole thing together. I know why I like using the drill. Okay, now we've got a solid structure and we can go ahead and put the castle on the top. Okay, so now we're going to attach the castle. Uh, we've got the pre-marked uh, positions of the uh, uprights E and F corresponding to the positions on the castle E and F. So it's very clear how this has to position. Remember, this is the back of the loom, this is the front of the loom, so we're going to put this in place, and of course the name David faces front, so you can't get this wrong. Uh, this is the blocking pin, it's used to, right now to hold everything in place. Don't Make sure you don't remove that. <clears throat> We've got two bolts. The, the barrel nuts, the corresponding barrel nuts are already inserted in the uprights, uh, so that's fine. Uh, I've got the washers preset on here. So, and you'll also see on here, there are um, uh, dowels pre-assembled in the castle. There are two holes on the, on the top of the uprights. So one hole is for the dowel, one hole is for the bolt. And that'll be very obvious since there's only one hole on the top. So here we go. I'm gonna take this do the left side here first. Get my dowel and then just push it down so the dowel's in place. I could already feel by just twisting this castle that the other one is in place. Down it goes. It's got enough friction that it's holding itself now. I'll just drop in the, the bolt and you don't have to worry about alignment of the barrel nut because that's preset and uh, it's positioned correctly. And you make this good and snug and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Of course, if you don't have a tripod sitting in front of you, you can walk around to the other side. It makes it a little easier. I'm a little blocked in, but that's okay. Long arms, so that works. Okay, so now we're, we've got uh, the treadle assembly that we're all putting together. 
Uh, first step is putting these little screws, all 80 of them, into the holes in the treadle. Big job, and I'll show you how we go about doing that. First off, you insert this screw just by hand in the holes like this. Just gonna give it a little more turn than I just did. And it's, you know, take your pick whether you feel it's easier for you to do, you know, one at a time, put one in and then screw it in further and then go to the next one. It makes no difference, do it one way, do it another way, whatever makes sense for you. Uh, this is just one way you can. So, got them all preset and then I'm gonna take my electric drill and screw them in approximately to height. Now, what is that height? Four millimeters from the bottom of the groove here which is one millimeter above the groove. So when you, if you try to look at this in a flush, you want this head sticking out one millimeter, which, whoops, lost one. That's about, that is about uh, one millimeter. So that's about the height you want. Stick this one back in. And so I'm just gonna go through and now you might see that uh, some of my screws are sitting here a little crooked. And that's okay because as soon the hole is drilled straight, so as soon as I start going in, it straightens up. And so what I'm doing is, again, approximate, getting them 90% of the way. Now what I'm going to do is take a screwdriver and look at them in this fashion. So I'm just looking down the length to see uh, are they sticking out a millimeter, are they a little bit less, a little bit more, and do a little fine tuning, adjusting to get them all where I want them. So that ends up being a a good treadle and now I'm going to do the same thing for this other one you can see here by now I have already done eight of the treadles I just left two to be done okay here we are with foot rail it is upside down so you see all the holes uh, that's the side that we need to work on now I've got a 70 centimeter loom that I'm putting together if you have a 90 or a 110 you'll see a few more holes than what I'm showing here uh, larger hole on the outside, don't use that, that's for the spring loom. And the smaller holes, like this one here, uh, they're used for locking the bar in place uh, a little later on in the, in the process, so we'll get to that. So right now we're talking about these large holes in the center, and that's what we're going to use. And what we're doing is taking one of these screw eyes and putting it in and getting it started here. Now if you can screw it in with your fingers all the way, that's great, but if it gets a little tough, like it is for me, you're going to stick this screwdriver in here and use that as a lever arm to get this screwed in the rest of the way. Now the next question is, how far do you screw it in? Well, I'll tell you. You put this little measuring block that we've included. It's 33 millimeters high, and that's how high we want that um, Screw eye. So I'm looking at this saying, no, it's not quite there. So we're going to go in one more turn and measure again. And when I say one more turn, I mean that I want the uh, eye aligned along this plane here. So we're going to be sticking a rod in through this way. So you want to orient your, your eye bolt this way. Now just measure it. It's still a little high. So we can do another half turn. And that's perfect. Okay, so let's do the next one. Let's see where we are there. Perfect.
and more true. Go. All right, I'm going to finish with the other three and then we'll be on to the next step. Okay, we're going to attach the treadles to the uh, footrest. Uh, first thing you'll notice that I've laid everything out here. Uh, the treadle or the treadles are positioned in such a way that uh, these first five are facing inwards and the next five are facing inward from the other side. The alignment of this is important because it aligns the correctly with the lambs and the tie-up cords and so we don't want to uh, put them all facing the same direction do this half in one direction half in the other that's the way to go about it so next step take one of your bushings put it through the eye and take your metal rod and put it through uh, through that bushing now we're going to take a treadle and we're going to slide it on slide the uh, treadle a little further, then we're going to take another bushing, keep sliding that, and then we're going to take a treadle, keep sliding your rod, now I'm going to take another bushing, we're going to put it through over here on the other side, or from the other side, like that, line it up and put your rod through that one, and push it through, don't push too far, next treadle, Bushing, treadle, next bushing, and you'll find the further you go, it'll start to get snugger and snugger, and you got to help the alignment a little bit. And it's just because there's slight variances in the heights and the positions of all these uh, eye bolts and, and everything, it just gets a little snugger, a little snugger as you go as you go forward here. Pull that rod back a little bit. That's the other thing you'll see. Got to leave enough room for the treadle. far. Another push in here. Sucker in there. There we go. You can see that I've been getting a little snug and you know fighting a little bit as you get closer to the end, and you'll you'll see what I mean when you're doing this. That's the idea. Uh, and then we're gonna put the locking bushing and screw in on the sides on both sides, and we'll come back and do that in the next step. Okay, here we are. I'm taking a bushing and one of the 55 millimeter screws. Put the screw in the bushing, put the screw in the hole, and you'll see by screwing this in, it locks this in place so that it can't go anywhere. Slide this into the screen, do the same thing over here. We've got our treadles fully assembled. 
Okay, here we are. I've put the loom up on the table so we can get a good image here. Got the treadle lock all set. Uh, we're going to tip this around so that it's right side up. And then we're going to fit it in between the loom here. And we're going to take our screws that's going to fasten this and put them through the holes. You can see like that. And now I'm going to bring and pull them back just so they don't protrude. I'm going to bring this up and I'm putting pressure on the screw to find that hole that it's that it's going to go into. And it's just a bit of, there it goes, sliding it in the hole, screwing it in by hand a little bit. Now I'm going to go over to the other side, do the same thing. And just find that hole. You can hand screw it in a couple turns, then you know you've got the hole. If you can't hand screw it in, then you probably don't. And you can also just lift up and down, and then the resistance of the screw in there is preventing it from really moving, and you know you've got the screw in the hole. Then you can take your screwdriver or drill, and, and if you feel a little bit of, like, not a little bit, quite a bit of resistance as you screw these in, then you know you're not in the hole. Okay, you want to make sure you're in the hole and screwing it in. It goes in very smoothly and very easily if you have the screw correctly in the hole. And that is that. So now, if I try to lift this off table, all these treadles are going to hang down. So just be very careful of that if you, uh, when you are, you know, moving the loom around, you'll probably have it on the floor when you're doing this. Uh, but if you're moving the loom around at this point, the treadles are just going to go fall right down and you easily trip with the loom if you're trying to move it. So just be careful about that. Okay, and now we're going to uh, well, assemble the lambs. And uh, this is what we are calling a lamb. It's the connection between shafts and the treadles. Uh, when you push down on the treadle, it's going to pull down a series of uh, lambs, depending on your, your tie-up, and that's going to pull down the, um, the uh, equivalent shaft bar. Okay, so the first step is uh, we need to attach uh, all of these lamb cords to the middle of the lambs. So uh, you can either eyeball it, or you can measure and make a mark. Your choice. In the end, they all have to be in the middle. So uh, this is for those who are more analytically minded. This is probably the way you want to go. Let's try to go with this and we're at 54 centimeters at 21 and a half inches. That's uh, uh, elbow to elbow or corner to corner. So 54. That's 27, so I'm just going to make a little mark here, right through. Doesn't have to be to the millimeter in the middle, uh, but yeah, within five millimeters for sure. So uh, keep that in mind. Next thing, we're going to take a lamb and we're going to take two of these red retaining clips and one of these cords, and that's the insulator, that's the, the setup. So these retaining clips are, uh, well, the hole is smaller than the, uh, uh, than the uh, lamb bar, so pressing them on is a little challenging. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. Uh, you can use the table to back that and snap it on and slide it, or I will leave this one for a reason. Or you can just use your, your fingers. Uh, it is a little tough on the fingers though. It's a, it's a tight squeeze. As you can see. There we go. Now, of course I forgot to put this on first. So one retaining clip, then your eye and you slide the retaining clip around right to your on the other side of your 
mark here on your eye around the elbow. To get to the middle. So this is actually in the middle and the retaining clips are on the sides. And we're going to go back and put this on. slide that into that position. So that's the completed assembly. Now I'm going to just put that aside and do the next one. See that uh, on the first one, this is a little bit tighter to get on. Yeah, that's just the tolerance in the eye. And some will be a little tighter, some will be a little looser. And we'll just go with the flow on that. Okay. So that's the way you do this, and you go through all eight. Of the lambs. I'm going to go through and do that. You don't have to watch me do all of them and we'll come back with the next step. Okay now we're going to uh, attach the tie-up cords to the lambs. Uh, we're going to put five per side. I've got one done here where I've uh, already slid them on. Uh, I want to talk a bit about the Texolf cord. Uh, this is a, a critical point because if you uh, use the wrong hole here, uh, A, it could break, or if you use a, a different cord than it, or a different hole than you should, then your the distance that you pull the treadle, uh, the harness down could be too, uh, too short. So it's very important that we get this uh, correct. So you use the first usable hole after it's been cut. And what I mean by usable hole, I'm trying to get inside this one here, and you can see that the the cut, the cut is very close to the edge of the Texolf loop. So it was cut right here. And the problem with using this hole is that we, when, we, when I say we cut, we actually burn uh, the, uh, uh, the nylon cord. And in that burning process, it weakens this loop, okay? which means you should not use that first loop, always this, this second one. Now, there's, there is one exception. If you cut a piece of Texolf uh, in the middle, well, then you've got lots of, of, of extra room. And I want to use this end as an example. See, this was cut more in the middle. It's got two long ends. So this is the correct loop to use in this case, okay? Because that's strong, it's never gonna uh, break. It hasn't been uh, uh, weakened through melting. Uh, and that's and that's the, the thing that you need to look at is, you know, the first strong full loop. Second thing is that there should be 12 loops between here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And so you attach on one end to this uh, lamb, and on the other end is you're attaching to the treadle um, screw that we uh, screwed in earlier in the uh, in the video. Okay, so I wanted to make that very clear regarding Texolf. And now we'll go ahead and put this on. You just slide the uh, lamb inside of the first loop. That. So I'm looking at, I'm looking visually at this loop each time, seeing where was the melt, where did it get cut, and then selecting the first usable loop after the cut. In our quality control process, every few minutes while we're cutting these cords, 
somebody is actually counting out the 12 loops to make sure it's the right length. And this is number five, and then we'll flip it around. And that's a rather long one, so I just want to check. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's good. And that's four or five, it means, there we go. So that's the, you slide these around and just leave them on the edge here. And then you can, when you're doing your tie up, you can just pull one forward and use it as, as needed. And that's complete. And we'll go on to the next one. I'll go through and do all of these and meet you back here for the next step. Okay, I just wanted to show you the difference between the 70 and the 90 or 110. I've got the first lamb put into the uh, hinge points here. Okay, and that's that's how that's set up. But if we look over at the, this is a, a David 110. You've got these arms that are attached to the uh, back horizontal piece, one on each side, and that's where the uh, uh, lambs go into. The lambs are the same size for all the different looms. So we had to uh, uh, create an alternative rather than having the hinge points in here. So that's what your 110 or 90 uh, David loom would look like. Okay, I've got the lambs all prepared as we've seen. Uh, the next step is inserting the lambs into the hinge points uh, here. And we start at the, the back number eight and so all it is, is pushing the end here into the hinge point of the nylon uh, buffer that's been inserted into this hole. And then you squeeze it and just apply a little bit of pressure, bend it a little bit to give you the room to put it, allow it to go into the other one. That moves nice and freely. And just let it uh, fall to the, to the covers here. Grab your next one. Insert again on one side. And here I'll show you from this side. You bend a little bit and insert. And then go on to the next one. And I'll be back in a minute and we'll start talking about harnesses. Okay, we're going to uh, talk about the harnesses. First uh, step is to insert the uh, hooks into the ends of the harness, just like we've done for a few of them here. Uh, key point is that they uh, face outwards, the open end faces outwards, and also they need to be inserted uh, to the correct depth and all to the same depth. So having them, laying them uh, beside each other, uh, where well you, you can check that pretty easily. Uh, and so I'm going to show you that. So it's quite easy. Insert and screw in. Hole pre-drilled hole is uh, is sufficient. You don't generally don't need any kind of tool or anything to aid you. Your fingers can do the the work. Okay, that. let's give a quick test. That looks good. Turn it around to the other side. You see I'm going just past the thread and a little extra and see. And there we go. That one doesn't want to stand up well for me. And so then you continue on and do all 16. Some of them will be upper harness bars, some will be lower harness bars. It really doesn't matter, they're all identical. Just turn too much. Yeah. 
Okay, we're a little further in the assembly than uh, you are. Uh, however, we've come back because we've discovered a very important point here and we can't really go backwards any other way. And that is that these hooks need to be screwed in right to the elbow here. Uh, and originally, and you'll see in the, in the film, uh, if you go back, we had them, uh, a lot of them sticking out a little further than that. But it's important to have them all the same and so right to the elbow is a good position to make sure you have everything at the same uh, height. And that little, you know, couple of millimeters difference is going to make a difference when you're trying to level out harnesses. If this side is deeper and that side is less deep, yeah, well, you're never going to get this uh, harness or you may never get this harness level otherwise. So uh, take note of that. Okay, I want to talk about heddles for a minute. Uh, so Texel heddles are, uh, in the case of the David Loom, uh, bundles of 100, uh, 280 millimeter heddles, and that's the length of the heddles. Uh, it's one continuous loop, so these loops at the top are uh, the connecting point from one heddle to the other. Uh, ingenious system, however, when you have the heddles on the harness, then when you're trying to spread them out, uh, if they're connected at the top, it becomes a bit of a challenge to slide them around on your harness. So what we recommend is to snip the ends here, and that way each heddle becomes individual when you put it on the loom. And so the way you do that is just put your scissors through the loops here and snip away. You don't want to be snipping anywhere other than the tip, the ends here, these end loops. Because if you snip down here, you're going to break your, ruin your heddle and you'll, you'll get new ones. Now this can also be done when, you're, when your heddles are already on the loom. There's lots of room in the David loom. Sometimes on different looms, access to the, head, uh, the tops or bottoms of the heddles is a little more challenging once the heddles are on the harnesses and in the loom, uh, just because of space constraints. With the David Loom, there's lots of room, so that's not an issue. But in generally, general terms, um, this process before you even put the heddles on the loom is easier and quicker because uh, you've got all the loops together concentrated here and you can just snip through. It's a bit of an eye game as you look through and try to find the loops that aren't. So I'm trying to find them with the tips of my scissors here. And see if there's any that I missed while going through. You can see you catch a few like that. See a few here. And if you missed one, you know, you, you, you get the, the heddles on the harness and you missed one, you just snip it on the loom at that point. Uh, you do, do a little bit of one off there. So that's a bundle of heddles that's completely snipped. So I'm going to go through and snip the rest of them and then we're going to put the uh, harnesses together and put the heddles on the loom. Okay, so here we are again. Now we're going to add the harnesses, first the top, then the bottom, then we're going to attach a lamb. Uh, we're going to add heddles in between that process and walk through all of that. Now, when it comes to the heddles, you've got uh, uh, the quantity of heddles you get is 800 with 70 centimeter loom, 1,000 heddles with a 90 centimeter loom, and 1,200 with the uh, 110 centimeter loom. Um, I'm going to put a bundle of heddles on. You simply open the loop here, the top loop, and slide your harness bar or slide it on the harness bar. Now uh, we're going to start on harness eight. And remember what I talked about with the treadles, and, uh, the treadle tie-up cords, this is the first usable loop. Uh, we're going to be looking for the same thing. So I'm just using this one right now as an example. But if I were to connect to the very bottom loop here, it's, it's right where it was burnt. It's not strong. You can't do that. You have to connect to the first usable loop like this. Okay. Now, we're going to start with, on the other side here, I'm going to grab harness 8, cord for harness 8, and I'm going to insert that 
to my eye hook. Uh, and then I'm going to grab the cord for number eight. Remember what we said earlier about uh, making sure that you have, you actually have cord for, or the cords for harness eight as opposed to uh, the one beside it. It's very easy to grab the wrong one because they, these cords tend to curl a little bit one way or the other. So just jumping up and double checking that you've got the right cord is a good idea. And then the next step here, we're going to take the top twist ties off and only the top. And this side and one on the other side as well. Now we're going to take the bottom harness bar and stick it through the bottom loop here. And you're, in this case, we're going to put the uh, hooks facing downwards because now we're going to connect the lamb number eight. You're going to lift up your lamb and you've got this cord will, will, it doesn't matter which cord, there's no left and right. Whichever one you grab, the cord will rotate to get the right, correct one. Again, first usable loop, we're going to attach it here. There we go. And same thing on this side. First usable loop. And then once that's attached, you can orient your lamb on this side. That's the way it's going to hang. And now we take the, the uh, twist ties off, front and back. And before I finish that, uh, you notice how well it's standing relatively even. However, if I have my pedals way on this side, now this wants to fall down. It's going to be a bit of a challenge to set this up. So when you're going through this process, put those heddles in the middle, okay, so that it's a little bit balanced. And as soon as we've got the twist ties off, the first thing you want to do is spread these heddles out so that the, the harness stays balanced and doesn't tip to one side or the other. Okay, so I'm going to put some over here, put some over here. And now the, the harness is maintaining its position the way you want. Okay. Uh, let's see here. No, that's good. Go ahead. You can see here, I've got a, a loop that didn't get cut. You just go in and snip it. And you can do that at any time. So that's not a, not a challenge for you. So now we've got one harness, it's, it's, it's uh, got its stability, it's uh, you've got cords or heddles on either end to, try to keep it in place. And now we're just going to move to the next one. So you grab another harness bar. And we're going to do the same thing, go to the back, number seven, first usable um, loop in the Texolf cord. Put the harnesses through. Grab cord number seven on this side. Again, put it through first usable loop. Take these top twist ties off. These twist ties can be annoying. Now we're going to take another harness bar for the bottom, slip it through here, and grab line number seven, grab the cord, make sure you're grabbing the correct cord, you can see here are the two that I need, you've got another one from another lamb, 
kicking around, so easy to make a mistake if you, and you'll, you'll figure the mistake out pretty quick. Anyway, connecting here. And again, I'm going to try to put this approximately in the middle, so it's okay. While I'm taking the twist ties off and and then spreading the handles out. So you see what happens if I go and put them all over here. That's what happens. So that's why you, why you need to be careful and make sure they, they get spread out. Otherwise you end up with pedals falling off the harness and start to get yourself a mess. So. Oh, my cord fell off the end. There you go. So I'm glad I showed what will happen if you don't think about the balance. It just turns into a bit of a nightmare. So there we go. Number seven and eight are now done. So I'm gonna finish off the rest of these as you can as well. And then we'll come back and uh, go with the next step. Okay, now we're gonna do uh, the treadle type. This is all still part of uh, the setup. And uh, now we're getting into uh, adjusting the harness heights to the correct position. In order to do that, you have to have every harness tied up. And the way we do that is do by doing a, 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 a tabby plain weave uh, tie up. So I've pulled out um, two, four, six, eight on the left side and one, two, one, three, five, seven on the right side here. And we're just going to take the middle two tails and we're going to tie those up. So we're going to take the back number eight first just so we can see things the best. And you just pull it, pull it down and slip it over top of the screw head for number eight. And we'll, get, we'll reposition in a minute to give you a, uh, an up close of this process. But for right now, the other thing you'll find is if you push the treadle down, then the cam actually helps Keep the, the cam will help keep the uh, treadle down and you can attach your, your tie up cord. So maybe we'll reposition right now and I'll show you with some of the other ones. Okay, so putting a tie up cord on the eye on the screw head. I'm pulling the lamb down with my with the cord, getting it in front of that eye or in front of that screw head, and then just with my finger pushing it over the loop. Do the next one. Like that. And we'll uh See you at the next step. Okay, now we're going to start with the uh, adjustments of the harnesses. You can see we're nowhere near where we want to be. Uh, things are almost level here and they need to be on a nice sloping angle. Um, the things that we're going to adjust is we're going to adjust the harness height and the level of a harness. So left to right. Okay, we're not going to worry about things like this over here. They will adjust themselves on uh, by themselves. This one's sticking out a little bit further than this one's sticking out a little bit further than this one. <clears throat> Those things will adjust themselves as we go. Two things, and it's all focused on the harnesses. The other thing I want to point out is the cam positions. Uh, they don't all necessarily have to be perfectly aligned with each other. Uh, that's secondary. This, uh, the levelness of the harnesses is the primary adjustment. So don't look under the hood, look at these things, adjust here only. Okay, now let's get started with that. We've got 
an adjustment block here. Uh, this is eight centimeters on the long side and six centimeters on the short side. So we're going to adjust harness one so that it's eight centimeters from the top of the castle here, or the bottom of the castle. And then we're going to look at the back of the loom and adjust so that we are six centimeters from the bottom of the castle. Once we have shaft eight and shaft one adjusted to the correct height, then we're going to adjust all of the other harnesses so they slope from eight down to one in an even slope. And that's not to be adjusted to the millimeter, it's eyeball that it's the correct slope. And we're also looking for levelness uh, left to right on all the harnesses. So let's get started with the front here. When I put this block here, I see that harness one is a little bit too high. Now the way we adjust the height of the harness is by adjusting the nuts down here. Okay, adjusting the position of these nuts. So if I want to lower a harness, I'm going to lower these nuts. Now the top nut is a locking nut, and the bottom nut is the actual nut that's holding the position. So I'm first going to unscrew the top nut to loosen, and then by just creating some slack here, you can turn the bottom nut down a little bit. So I'm screwing the bottom nut tighter, and sometimes I need two hands. Sometimes another way to do this is just to push this cord down and then the bottom nut can spin nice and easily and you let it come down. Bring the locking nut back on top. Tighten that up so it's not going to move. And we're going to grab our adjusting lock again. Slide it in here. Now I'm getting in there nice and nice and smooth. Now of course if I've got eight centimeters nicely on this side if I have eight centimeters on the other side, then we're level as well. So I go over here, I've got a little bit of play, as you can see. So we need to adjust the level, and you do that with this screw, or with this bolt right here. So it's good that we're working on harness one, you can see that nice and easily. So I'm going to screw this in deeper in order to get the left side to upwards. There we screwed it in somewhat and now that's pretty uh, there's not I'm trying to wiggle it and there's no wiggle there so that is perfect. So now harness one is exactly eight centimeters from the bottom of the castle. Now we're going to turn the loom around and we're going to adjust the shaft number eight. Okay, back side of the loom. Put the block in here. Now I'm using the short side because I want six centimeters. And I've got a ways to go here. On this side, it's not quite as much. It's a lot, a lot less. So that means that the shaft is not level as well as it needs to come upwards a little bit. Now, when you, if you need a, a harness to uh, come up, that means we need to loosen this bolt or this uh, nut. So again, I'm going to move the pressure here and loosen these nuts a little bit. Lock it into place again. Let's see what we got here now. And we're getting still a little bit too low. Now I've gotten a little too. That's just sliding over there. It's a little bit snug, so I'm going to lower it just a little bit. There we go. So that's a nice six millimeter uh, distance. This one is still out of whack, which means we're left to right, we're not right. Back side here, 
and I'm going to just adjust that same screw, which is a little challenging to get to on shaft A. So I'm going to do it a little bit more from the bottom. You can see I'm going to rotate it down here, and I'm going to screw it inwards. I'm just using, and you're going to ask, how is he rotating this cam downwards? And well, I'm doing that by using my index finger of my left hand and just pushing the cam down. You can also push a treadle down. I could have accomplished the same thing by pushing this treadle down. Now I've got the position of the cam so that I can adjust it. Still a little bit of movement there. Turn it a little bit more. And we're still getting a little bit of that changed. So that's lowered the whole shaft. You see this side. So it's uh, it's lowered this side, so now my measuring block is showing that I have to raise the whole shaft. So it looks like the shaft is le more level, because the distance here is about the same on both sides, but my whole shaft has to come up. So we'll do that here. Place the lock nut. That looks like there we go. There we go. Looks like we've got a good position. Okay, so we have a level shaft and a correct height shaft. I'm just gonna lock the lock nut on top here. So that's not gonna move. And now we're going to turn the loom around again, and then we're going to work on adjusting so that all the shafts slope downwards from back to front at, a, at an even slope, uh, not jagged. So you can see the jaggedness right here, and that's not what we want. We want it to be nice and even. So these two shafts have to come upward a little bit. This one might need to go down a little bit. We'll see that as we go, and it's easier to see from the front, so you can see the slope from the front of all the shafts at the same time. Okay, we'll come back in two minutes. Okay, I cut out for a little break, but here we are again on the shaft three. One and two are very level. Uh, I will say that we noticed that the hook here on two was not as deep as it needs to be. That changed the level position that we were struggling with there. And so now that's set, everything is equal and we are level. Um, number three, so we're a little high on the, on the, that side, a little low on this side. So let's try this first. See what happens here. So I'm unscrewing the bolt. Seen, I don't know if you can see it, but the top the side here is coming up. No, I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. A little bit more? Yeah. We also need to do, so that's something interesting yeah. to actually talk about, is because this is... So it's important to see that this, the thread, as, you, as I unscrew this, so this bolt, that the cord comes with it. If the cord is sticking closer to the cam, yeah. then the effect is nil. So just double check that every time. Uh, so we're on three. 
still need to go a little further. See, here we go. See how much uh, it's, yeah. it's stuck there. And so if I do that, now I would even say that this side is higher, and so we went too far. How does that look? That looks a lot better. Okay, I think we're done with number three. We're going to go on to number four. Number four looks uh, sadly too low, so we're going to go to the nut. And the reason with number three we didn't go down to the nuts to uh, adjust is because it was pretty much at the right height. It was just levelness. So number four, I'm going to arms are having a hard time getting here. All right, well, you can start to see it, but it's not quite enough yet. So I'm just unscrewing the nuts on number four. There we go. Starting to see maybe a little bit too much here, and we're not quite level as well. That's a little better. And we'll try to adjust level. Maybe a little too far on that. There, that looks good. Push now, again? Oh, the, yeah, the cam. Yeah, check the cam to make sure the cord is actually. See the cord on the cam in good position. So, and that's what you'll see. You might have seen sometimes. I'll just push the treadle down to, and roughly let it go. That's to kind of yank the cords, see where everything shakes out. If something is stuck and gets freed, and then all of a sudden you're not level or a, a harness is not at the right height. You're starting to see the slope forming. Got a couple more to go here, but we're getting getting awfully nice here. So, on to number five. Where was that number five? That was number five. On to number six. Five's okay. Yeah. Or was you did four. I did four. Okay. Yes, so the five's okay. So, so that was four, and five is actually in a good spot. So we're moving on to number six. Six is too low, so we are going to go and adjust, adjust that. And again, it's the the bolts or the nuts I mean on the eye bolt at the, at the cam and I'm loosening those nuts to raise the harness. All right so that's number six. I think I'd like yeah that's about right actually. That's actually pretty good. Levelness it's a it's pretty much even with five over here. Whereas it's sticking up just above five over on this side. So we've got a little bit of levelness to work on. Still, actually, could come up a little bit more. Okay, now we have seven to go. Number seven, and of course, eight is already adjusted. Seven is too low. So we'll adjust those nuts. Uh, 
that's gone a little bit too far. Okay, that looks good on that mm -hmm. side, but it looks a little bit low on that side. So left's coming up. Hmm? Left's coming up. Left needs to come up, yeah. And the whole thing is now a little bit low. So that last adjustment, I felt that. So when I uh, adjusted the levelness, the left side came up, the right side goes down. As you're uh, leveling, you're moving both sides a little bit at a time in both direct in, in opposite directions. Left side's going up right side's going down and that's when you're screwing the bolt inwards and so yeah you might be looking over here and you see that one is good but then this one has gone too far so it's kind of right in between that point so i uh when i what i saw is i i thought the whole harness needed to come up a little bit which i just did and now i'm very happy with the slope we have here and the same slope is is down below in the bottom harnesses and if you, can you pan out, uh, pull back a little bit. Now you see that the, the uh, lamb cords here are all quite equal. Whereas before they were, uh, yeah, one was here, one was there and a little bit uh, wonky. But all of those things, you can't really judge them until you have this done because this guides everything. Okay. So uh, at this point, you know, we've got the, the, uh, 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 the beater hinges at a, at a good height. We've got the harnesses at uh, a good height. Uh, once we put the, the uh, rest of the loom together and put a warp on, I expect you'll get a pretty decent shed already from uh, uh, without having to do any further adjusting. However, from this point on, you don't need to do any adjusting until you get a shed on. Once the shed is on the loom, then you can uh, start saying, okay, my shed's not quite big enough. My shed is uh, being deflected by the beater. Uh, that's when you start making additional adjustments if they are required. Um, keep in mind that this eight centimeters and six centimeters, that is for the most part where you want your shafts to be. However, if you're fine tuning your shed, if you end up being having number uh, one here, at seven and a half because that's where you get the optimal shed well everything else has to adjust by half a centimeter as well but because of the variances in in Texelf cord the loop lengths and, and different things you've got four different cords that are all that are all cut at different positions and there's just variances that are within this uh, string uh, cord uh, Texelf cord system so with all that in mind uh, the correct position for your uh, loom for the harnesses might be half a centimeter lower or half a centimeter higher than someone else. So don't worry about these things until you get your shed on, then we optimize the shed after that. Same thing goes for uh, the cams up here. It's not precisely even. Well, that variance, I mean, it, sh it, sh it should have that slight angle the same as the shafts. However, that slight variance can be variances in the cords. It can be the variances in the tensions of the springs. There's just so many little variables that can play into that minor bit of difference. But this is not an area where you need to worry about. This is not an area where you start to get concerned and say, oh, I've got to make adjustments. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next step and get this loom finished. Okay, now we're going to assemble the back beam section. Uh, one thing to note, you've got two pieces that look really similar. However, this one is the right side and it has holes that go all the way through. Left side, holes that don't go all the way through. And that's the telltale sign. So we're gonna start by putting these uh, brown polyurethane pieces into the hole here, secure them 
with this one of these four screws. I'm going to use one on each side and then the other two screws are to fasten it to the loom later on. So the third step is taking this eye bolt and we're going to put it in here. But first, we're going to put this washer on the eye bolt, then insert it. And then we're going to take one of these retaining clips and put it over top of. And this is a fitting just like the lambs that we did earlier. You can take a, another washer and use that to push it down. Ultimately, when this gets screwed in later on, this retaining clip is going to end up being pushed uh, further on. So that holds it in place. That is complete. And uh, now I'm going to do the same thing exactly for the other side. One. Two. If this eye bolt is a little too tight for your uh, uh, for your fingers, you can use a, a screw or a nail just to turn it like that. If you have this screwdriver, won't fit in the, in this hole. So if you have a at home, if you have a smaller screwdriver, that could be used. Any one of those things could be used to help turn that. Get some more leverage if you need it. Last but not least, eye bolt and washer. Retaining clip. And this time I don't have another um, another washer. I'm going to try to use the eye bolt here to help push that down. There we go. Or you can get another washer from another phase of the assembly. Uh, but just to get it to sit a little deeper and that's it and now we're going to take these two and attach the warp beam and uh, back beam to them. We'll see you in a minute. Okay I've got the back beam in my hand. First step is to put these dowels into the two outer holes here. I've placed them. Again hear that sound difference? That's what you're looking for. Now we're going to screw the, take the left side. I'll try to work more at the kind of height that works here. Insert the screws and then screw them into Okay, now we've got that secure. We take the warp beam, place it in the hole like that. Now I'm going to take the right side, place the warp beam hole shaft through here. And then I'm going to fit, can't quite see, I'm going to fit the two dowels into the hole here, but that places it. Squeeze these together a little bit. Now the whole thing is together. On the other side here, we have a barrel nut hole. I'm going to put the barrel nut in there and actually I'm just going to turn this all the way around so that maybe we can see this. We need to reposition a little bit. Put the barrel nut in and tighten it up. And the uh, point here is you've got three small washers and a large washer, and that's the order that they should be placed. 
I'm going to try to push this whole assembly together so that the dowels are right in tight. And you tighten the whole thing together. Okay, here we are with the back beam section. I've uh, started to put the one side into the hole. So you're looking at two holes in the back post here. You're putting a polyurethane piece in the top. Okay, now we're going to move on to the brake uh, system and uh, you're going to need to take the brake drum, the wooden handle, uh, the Allen, uh, not Allen wrench, the uh, yeah, Allen wrench, and this bolt that requires an Allen wrench. First, place the bolt in the hole with the bushing, and then you're going to screw this on, and there's no threading inside the wood. And you're just turning this on. You turn the handle, you can turn the Allen bolt, take your pick. But you're creating a thread as you're turning, so it is advisable not to unscrew this at all uh, because then you can lose your position in the, screw, in the threading and it'll strip pretty quickly. There's a, I mean, there's a long bolt here, there's a lot of thread, and that's how this gets secure and doesn't come loose. It's getting a little tougher to turn the handle so the Allen wrench becomes easier to turn. Nice and snug, and the handle will work just fine. Next, we're going to take this uh, rod, this axle, we're going to put it through the hole that's going to work in like this, and you're going to try to place it about in the middle of that uh, of the warp beam. Next, there's a groove in here, and that's what we're going to place this over top and then fit the axle in the groove. And at this point we'll reposition so we can show a camera angle of that. Okay, here we are. Now we're going to take these uh, flathead screws and put one in here. The instructions, the handwritten instructions are be clear as to which screws so I haven't given you names of and sizes of bolts and screws but and then we're just going to turn this around so we see the other other one on this side there's a little hole inside the brake drum pre-drilled hole and so you see that the screw is just going over top of the of the axle and over top of the uh, uh, brake drum and, that, and there's enough room for it to go in between here so nothing is, is rubbing or catching. So now that's nice and secure. And we'll go back to the other side and continue putting the uh, brake handle uh, and springs back on. Okay, here we have uh, the first of three screws, three identical screws that are in the hardware bag. I'll put one here. Screw it in. Yeah, about most of the way. We're going to end up hooking a spring onto this. So if it is sticking out a little too far, we can adjust that a little later on. That's about right. And the third one goes into the one itself. Not 
test here is uh, these hinge or uh, springs have to attach. So if you, you screw it in much deeper, you're not going to be able to spring on. Same thing here. So that should be good. So I'm going to put this down for a minute. Next, we're going to put together the uh, open bent, the eye hook, uh, the eye bolt that's been bent open. And that is going to go right here. That's where we're going to place the um, place the cable, brake right cable. I'm going to leave it fairly loose. We'll adjust uh, as we get the brake on the, onto the loom. Next is the uh, brake handle. And we're going to take all of, so you've got all these bushings and washers. And I just take them all in my hand and I've got them in the correct order. This is going to go in from the inside. And I'm going to put these back on to that point and now I'm going to slide the bushing oops, bushing through here it's got a the flat side of the of the uh, handle here is going to go up against this so that the screws are on the inside and this whole uh, ensemble I'm just holding it with my knee here. This whole ensemble needs to get tightened up, but you can see how little thread there is right here. That's because we've got a carriage bolt, and the carriage bolt has a square piece on the other side here to the bolt. That's going to get sucked into the wood so that the whole thing doesn't turn later on. So I'm going to put this nut on without the washer. And then we'll, once we've got the carriage bolt uh, positioned well, then we will uh, tighten this up. Of course, I didn't give myself my 13 millimeter wrench, so I'm just going to stand up and grab that. Yeah, pause. So now we're going to attach the spring onto the screw that's on the loom, and then you're going to attach it to this screw on the inside here that's closest to the carriage bolt. So you've got two, I'm pointing to them here. One, two, taking the inside one, and you hook the spring to that. Next, again, I'm just holding this with my knee just so that it doesn't fall away. If you have somebody helping you, that's, that's equally good. Uh, just hold the, the handle while we get this cable in place. So we're going to start by hooking it on here. I'm going to wrap around. It goes one and a half times. Make sure that it's not crossing. It only has the possibility to cross itself right here, but uh, make sure that's not happening. And then we find that there is a one of the, uh, this stop. Okay, so now we've got the two springs. Uh, we're going to attach those, and we're going to attach the brake cable right here. With the springs, you've got uh, one difference between the two. You can see right here this end is cut open and these, this end is not, it's full, fully closed. On the other end of the springs, both rings are fully closed. So this has to be saved for the uh, brake cable because this is how you get the brake cable in. So I'm going to put that one up here and first attach this one onto the loom, the screw that's attached uh, to the loom itself. And then here we have two screws in the uh, handle you're going to take the inside screw, one closest to the carriage bolt, and, and basically this spring gets uh, mounted almost vertically, attaching to the screw. I'm holding it with my knee just to keep the handle up. Next, I'm going to take the brake cable, and I'm going to attach it to the, uh, the open, bent open eye bolt, wrap it around the, the drum, make sure it doesn't cross, there's only a little small stretch here where it can, but it's all, always important. Take my open end for the uh, uh, on the spring, hook in my cable, 
Then I'm gonna bring this down to the handle and lift up on the handle until it is close enough that I can hook the, cape, the, um, the spring onto. And I'm just gonna do that over again because you've got two sides really. One's a little flatter than the other and the flatter side fits on here a little bit better. And when you're installing it, you'll be able to see that's a pretty fine detail to catch on the video here, but it just fits better uh, and you'll see that. The brake handle should be about horizontal, which it is. A little bit up or a little bit down is not that big a deal. Uh, you can adjust this to fit you as you're sitting in front of the loom so that if you need it a little bit higher in order to release it, then that's fine. You adjust it by, by turning this, so in, you know, releasing some of the pressure and then turn this. Uh, so if you turn it this way, it decreases the amount of tension and the handle will get lo lower. If you tighten it, then the tension becomes greater and the springs stretch further. Now, another point that we'll talk about here is when you're releasing the tension, if you lift up really hard, then the springs have a tendency to come off of these screws. Two things you can do about that, you can unscrew your screw slightly to make it a little longer so there's a little more meat of the screw to stay connected. The other thing you can do is just, just decrease the amount of lift you give. You don't need to lift it right up, you just need to lift it so the tension on this spring is reduced so that the brake beam can move and your warp can release. So just play with that. Don't just give it a big yank. Just give it a little bit of uh, tension relief and see how much you need to, get to have your warp uh, release. That's it for the brake. She's fully assembled and uh, ready to go. Uh, now we're going to turn it around and we're going to work on the beater. Okay, now we're going to put the beater together. Uh, I've got uh, the two uh, beater uprights and I've got the bottom uh, of the beater. And I find it easy to use this. And what works even better is if I have the uh, buffers and they're in the instructions are coming at a later step. But I'm going to put the, this one in already. And so you just turn this in. And I've got something to lean this against. So I put this in the hinge hook and I can lean it up against there. And I have my hands free to work. So now we're going to take one of the two, uh, I believe these are M6 by 70 millimeter uh, bolt and barrel nut. I'm going to put the bolt through here. And then it goes into here, and underneath is the barrel nut hole. So pull it in from underneath. And we've talked about barrel nuts and how they work several times now. And this, this needs to press in a little bit. And I need to align that barrel nut a little bit better. Time my hinge hook twisted. Put that back. And that will stay there while I do the other side. Bolt. Thank you. Barrel nut. I'll try to put that in so it's aligned. There we go. So now it's loosely put together. Got my second buffer here. I'm going to put that in on this side. And I'm doing this on the loom. 
Uh, you could also just do this on the floor, lift the whole piece into position after you've got it assembled. Um, my knees don't enjoy going down onto the floor, so I prefer to do it a different way. So there it's resting here. Take my uh, 10 millimeter wrench and tighten it up. And I'll tighten up the one on the other side as well. Okay, now we're going to put together the uh, 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 handle on the beater. So you take the side with the pre, uh, preset holes, put the bolt in. This bolt has a washer on it, the M8 washer, small. Put that on and put that in. That one as well. You turn it around. I'm going to put the plastic bushing on each. And then we're going to put the handle on, and I'm just going to hand turn that in a little bit. So just so it grabs a little bit, turn it right back around. I've got the, and now I'll just turn this in. Tighten the lag bolt, nice and snug. And that's it, ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna put the beater, uh, uh, the top of the beater onto the assembly. I'm gonna put the bolt in from the front. This is a carriage bolt, so it's gonna suck into the wood here. And put it through. And because it's a carriage bolt, the, on the back side here, it just sticks out. So although there's a washer, we're first gonna put it on without the washer and tighten this up and uh, maybe you want to come over here with the camera to see this because it's we have a nice handle here to instead of the wing nuts we used to have so this is very good now I'm going to put the washer on and put back on and then you do the same thing on the other side here First, I'm going to see it just sticks out a little bit. And back it off. So now it's flush here, it's all the way sucked into the wood. Back this off. Washer on, and Bob's your uncle. Now I'm going to take the reed and put the reed in place. And I'll just put it in the bottom here like this. Lift until we've got enough, enough room. And you can center it uh, now or later. Uh, there's no mark to center it, so this is ballpark center, but you may want to move that around a little later on. Tighten this up and we see where we are. And the last, last thing to check is that the beater is square and it seems to be. It, it's touching both sides at the same time. And uh, so that's good. But if your beater needs adjusting, there is a video in our support section on how this adjustment works. Uh, gonna put the tie-on cords on first. Got uh, four holes here in the cloth beam. I'm gonna put a screw through the first usable hole of the Texolf. Screw that in here. Okay. 
I'm just going to screw it so it's flush and you can easily get your uh, thread or your uh, tech salt on or off as needed. So for the set, so the first hole is easy. It's one cord goes through there. The second hole, you're going to take two cords and you're going to put a screw through the through the, the first loop, usable loop of the first cord you work with. And then you're going to take the second cord. Texel's getting caught here. There we go. Take the second cord and put the first usable loop on there as well. And you're going to secure both cords in that next hole. And you're pulling them down so that they are secure. Again, flush with the hole here. Now we're going to the next hole, same thing. So we have one more cord. Third one, last hole. All these cords are cut to the right length so that your tie-on position is square. I drill. I screwed this one in a little too deep. Next, we're going to uh, take the ratchet, and here we're going to attach or secure it to the side with the X. The ratchet has an X, and you go X on X. Put it down here. Now you're going to take the uh, flathead screws, of which there are four. So there's two screw, screw sizes in this hardware bag that are very identical in length. I think the one millimeter difference. But there are different types of screws. And there's only four of one and nine of the other. The nine are for the, uh, the warp beam and, and the cloth beam cords. And the four are for this right here. Attaching your ratchet. around for my drill. Up on the table over there. Grab the drill. Zip this in a little quicker. Thank you. Next, we take our cloth beam, uh, or uh, yeah, cloth beam advance, warp advance lever. We're going to put it over top of in here, like this. It should go on a little bit smoother than that. Everything's sticking a little bit today. There we go. And we're going to take it and put it in the grooves. So you've got the two ends of your beam fit in the grooves here. And just fit in and slide forward. And my pole flips over. And 
beam and the cloth beam is functional. Last step here for the cloth beam is attaching a little cord here to hold your handle in place. And uh, you, again, you're going to do the same thing as you did with the cloth beam, just put the screw through two loops, this time the same cord. And there's a screw right here. See that will be in the way. And that just helps hold this and prevent it from falling all the way down. If you want it to sit a little higher, you can change the position of this uh, cord to something like this, and then it sits a little higher. So you can adjust it to the position that fits you. That's up to you. Put it right down here again, and I'll go with that. Uh, last piece here is the uh, breast beam. Breast beam, uh, here we have two holes, they fit over the two pins, pretty straightforward. However, with the David 90 and the 110, the, the, this beam is common with our spring loom, and so you end up having two holes on either end. Only one set of holes fit the David, uh, and the other set of holes are for the spring loom. So we'll just put this over top, and it just slides in place. Okay, so the last steps of assembling the David loom here, putting the shelf in place, like that. Blocking pin has its home right there. And then we've got the rattle covers, and they just slide on. You've got two, with 70 centimeter, you've got two 20 centimeter lengths and one 30 centimeter length to make 70. With the 90 of two 30s or three 30s, I'm sorry, and with the 110, you have three 30s and a 20. That's the David loom. Enjoy your loom.